so I'll give you a little example of that. There's a tune called Waterbound. It's a good uh, flood song. <laughs> <laughs> So some of that putting fancy chords in, that makes some people mad, you know. And that'll be a theme tonight as I show you some of what Terry's developed. There's traditionalists and there's people that are trying to push the boundaries. And so that's kind of, uh, I want to do one more before I plug it in just so you can hear a little. So that's the sweet side of the dulcimer, I think. Mm -hmm. When you said there were notes that couldn't be played because they were missing, yeah. What do you say around that? Well, uh, most tunes that we sing are in a major key. Yeah. So you just need an instrument that primarily gives you one major key and maybe one or two others, and then you can deal with that. So this will play really well in the uh, coincidentally in the keys that like Irish traditional music is in D major, G major, some different kind of A major and minor keys, a little bit of E minor, but it's not going to be good for F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, some of those <laughs> funky keys. Um, but it is a puzzle. But for the advanced player, it's a little bit of a puzzle to solve. But for the beginner. You really can take somebody that knows nothing and just tell them, keep moving that finger, keep going to the next note, and you automatically get a scale, which is, that's great. If you think back 120 years ago, that would have been perfect for a farmer. Many people will play a song. 
with that one finger and not do any of the fancy chords and right. they can play along with everybody else. And about 20% of the orders I get now are for chromatic dulcimers, which have all the notes. That's getting more and more popular. But they're never as fun as just playing the one where you can't really mess up as bad. Mm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really cool thing. So, um, I met Terry. When did I meet Terry? Back a long time ago. 97. Covington. Covington. Okay, yeah, I was 21. Uh, we're doing the math right here. I think you were filling in for David. He was mm -hmm. sick. And they were an attractive young couple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I thought, these people look nice, you know. And I guess <laughs> you were probably... Yeah, we're just old. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you look very nice. But, but, um, so, but Terry made some dulcimers. And I've always got people trying to get me to like their dulcimers, but I actually liked his, and I re emailed him years later and said, I'd really love for us to get together and work on instruments or something. But the oil boom happened, apparently. So he disappeared for about 10 years. Is that true? <laughs> and then apparently the price of oil went down, and then he showed up again. I said, hey, <laughs> but, um, so I don't know how, when, at what point, was it six or five, six, seven years ago? Five. Yeah. So we just... Around number 350 of, of the hourglass model. And we're at about 800 now. So. And I probably had 14, 15, or 16 of his instruments, and then I would end up giving them back to him, and we just kept going through different iterations. So this kind of represents the, the, the latest one, and it, I think this is a good 1.0. Um, for all the time we've spent together. And um, he's, this is, I'm going to show off some of the more modern stuff so you know what he's been up to. I feel like I'm doing a sales pitch at a convention. A <laughs> they, they're not buying, so just entertain them. <laughs> so uh, when you go to perform in a large venue, they turn everything up so loud that you can't really use microphones like you can in a small church or something. It'll just feed back and it turns into a mess. So there's electronic pickups. There's little piezo crystals in here, and those crystals vibrate and give off electricity. And so that's what I'm gonna let you hear, I hope. You turn the amp on? Thank you. We don't have much of a All this is a little new as of this weekend. So what you're hearing now is not a microphone, it's these crystals in there. So that's really handy. Now the trick is, a lot of people who make these, they make them for guitars. And then dulcimer builders try to put them in dulcimers and there's always something wrong with them. Sometimes there's a lot of noise. Uh, but he's, he actually found, we tested a lot of companies and he made them clean. And um, it's very useful. If I go to a big, large event, where they have loud sound. 
I don't know it would be a great thing. Um, so it doesn't sound exactly acoustic, but it's pretty close. You know, it sounds like an acoustic instrument. There's another pickup here. This is a magnetic pickup. There's crystals in here vibrating. This is a magnet with wire coiled around it. So let's hear a little bit of that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Terry, you know what I just did, don't you? <laughs> did I just show him the wrong one? Might have. So um, all these knobs over here, there's a lot going on. Um, let's see. spring reverb is? Do you know what a slinky is? Yes. So you can connect the audio wire on one end of the no. slinky to the other mm -hmm. and the slinkiness of it makes it sound like reverb. Yeah. That was true. So one benefit of this magnetic electric pickup is it allows me to do some things like show you what spring reverb maybe sounds like. Oh, great. So this is um Let's see. I don't know much about this, but they have been modeling electro. They've been modeling old tube uh, equipment and, and uh, they somehow model an old thing and then stick it in this box so you can get a little taste of it. So listen. Well, the to box this. is picking up the the frequency and it can shape it to sound like different things. Yeah. So that's like a spring reverb a little bit. And people talk about it sounding drippy. So here's a some drippiness. Let's hear this. What he can do with that box is he can he can configure it before a performance knowing what he's going to be doing yeah. and then he can just hit the button with his foot and change the whole program. Reverb next selection. I think. This is a... Uh... <laughs> I'm going to 
turn this. This is picking up the sound, but I'm going to turn this one up now. He made it where I can pick up both of them a little bit. Because this, those crystals, you can hear it when you hit, hit them. So I'll use that as an effect. sound like rock and roll. This, what I like about this is I can make everyone mad about something <laughs> in the dulcimer world. There's some people that like the old stuff. There's some people like the new stuff. But since I've been doing this my whole life, it's very helpful to be able to um, match the situation I'm in, which is pretty cool. So if I don't want to hear that reverb, I can turn that off and that shimmering sound and that echo. Turn that off. So now, look at this weird thing. There's a, is this called a DIN plug or it's a 13 pin? DIN. DIN. So this wire holds, and I'm being more technical because you know, you know Terry. There's 13 <laughs> wires in here. And, um, it allows you to send a lot of stuff back and forth. Each one of these strings, he's set up so it comes out. I can get individual strings on individual wires. Why would you want that? Well, there's all kinds of interesting nerdy reasons, but the best one is uh, there's a device that will turn audio into digital information. Oh, okay. And by isolating the strings, it does that cleaner, and it turns that into to computer information. So right now, though, it's just three sounds coming out this cable, and they go into this synthesizer. And the synthesizer sees three notes coming in, and it converts that into data that I can then apply to crazy sounds. You can make it sound like a trumpet. That's the idea. But before we go there, <laughs> um, let's back up to it. Let's see. So that's like a string sound. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to put a little reverb on here and just do an old Irish tune. this is I can play a chord, hit this pedal and it'll hold the chord.
when I play solo, it's nice to have a little bit of a string section. And then there's more extreme effects. Um, ultimately, I'm going to have to figure out how to use this thing where most people in the audience don't really know what I'm doing. I just want it to sound good. And he has a switch on the dulcimer, so a lot of that he can actually change programs. Yeah, and this is really cool. So, um, like, this is a flute here. And I'm going to turn off the dulcimer sound for a second. And I would like to just hear the flute. So this is a bass guitar sound, which could be handy sometimes. And he was saying you could change the notes, so I'm going to make that note go down. How do I do that? Here it is. get people that want me to build them a bass dulcimer, and I do that once in a while, but I hate it because the strings are so big, mm. it's very hard to play, it doesn't really sound right, but that mm. shifts everything down to that octave and it's still easy to play. Yeah. Haven't I seen some with four strings? Yeah. Yeah, we do both four and three. Is that player preference? <laughs> I know Normally, we're about yeah. the crazy sounds, but I want to... Normally, the fourth string is a double melody because the instrument used to not be as loud, and so it would it would enhance the sound of the melody. Oh, okay. it's getting more more equidistant string now, where they do a different note on it. So, one, do you play in a band or something? Or mostly yeah. by myself. Just by yourself. But I um, every there's some orchestra pieces for Dulcimer, so I do that every once in a while. Most dulcimer players are traditional. They yes. want 
So I just have to, like, if I go to California, I can play whatever I want. And if I go to Alabama, <laughs> like North Alabama, you gotta be careful. Yeah. Let's go to Beatles too. So that's that's what we've been working on. That's what, and it's crazy, you know. Nobody will hardly appreciate how much went into this. But he knows metalworking, woodworking, uh, you know, electronics, yeah. and that he wanted to do it, <laughs> and that he could do it. You know, that's just nuts. No, we all appreciate it. We just all can't grasp. Our brains just don't function. And that's that level with the different guys. I'm thankful. It'll be yeah, interesting to see where it goes with the, the community. Of Is this the very first one? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, there are some people that definitely want one. one, yeah. But it's probably going to be a little bit more. You know? mm -hmm. But the dulcimer music has evolved so much in the last four years. I mean, I'm years. sitting here listening to it thinking, this sounds like every country band needs yeah, one. Exactly. I mean, I don't understand what are they using a steel guitar for if you can have this that does, exactly. that already the has multiple sounds coming out of it and that it can replicate a steel guitar. That's a good point, steel guitar. Yeah. I mean. You gotta have a steel guitar and a fiddle in the band. But you can make it sound like a steel guitar or you make it hard to do it.
Any final questions about this thing? There'll be a quiz here. Tonight. Yeah, can somebody, oh, can somebody just, uh, <laughs> if somebody yeah, does a, a steel guitar, can they pick that up and play it? Can what? If somebody's good on a steel guitar, can they pick that up and play it? I think <laughs> if they're good, they, uh, in Nashville there's a saying, steel guitar players will rule the world yeah. one day. They're all engineers. They play a, an instrument with 22 strings. And 22, yeah. Wow. I think those guys could play it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think so. So what's the next, uh, the next move in the development? I gotta learn how to present this to the world in a way that, that they embrace it. That, well, the people that wouldn't want something like this will want 